Hello everyone, how are you today? Happy Sunday. Glory to God. Welcome to our online fellowship. This is Pastor Ambrose. I want to welcome you to our Ambrose King Online Ministry where we give your life a lifting through the Word of God. Today we'll be talking about how to handle rejection, how to handle betrayals, false accusation as a Christian, you know, how to handle uh, challenges that we face as a Christian. God did not tell you that, us that uh, when you're a Christian, all, all will be rosy. He told us that we fast, suffer persecution. So I want to welcome you to today's service. It's going to be awesome. So go ahead and invite your friend. Go ahead and share. And I trust that it's going to be a blessing to you. Make sure you have your Bible with you. I'm going to examine some scriptures on what to do when you face persecution, when you face rejection, uh, when people that you love turn against you. Uh, people that love you, they turn against you all because you are now serving Christ. Or when you go for the truth, people reject you. They, they, they count you out as uh, you are not fitting to their, their meets. You are not, no longer fitting to their clubs. How do you handle it? So I want to welcome you, everyone. Thank you for joining. Again, this is Ambrose King Online Ministry Fellowship, where we give your life a lifting through the Word of God. So what is rejection? Have you ever been rejected? Have you ever been falsely accused? Have you been betrayed since you became a Christian? You should find out that before you became a Christian, everybody loved you. Everybody want to be around you. Party time. People just love you. But it means that you are now a Christian. Oh my goodness. That's where challenges start. You see, there are different levels of persecution. Once you become a Christian, you begin to have truths and higher truths and present truths. The greatest persecution comes when you have, uh, when you're operating in the uh, higher truth because uh, people will reject you. You are no longer following doctrine. You're no longer following what they believe. So they will look at you as odd. So uh, Christians face persecutions. Christians face uh, uh, rejection all over the world. So it's a package. It's a package, you know, because before you got saved, you were under the domain of Satan. You were uh, really under the domain of the devil and he loved his own. But it means you say, I believe on Jesus and I want to do the work of God and I'm going out for the word of God. You are going to face persecution. You are going to face trials. But how do you handle them? You see, most of your, your, your persecution or those who oppose you are those who know you, your family, your friends. Even your loved ones will turn against you. So uh, people that love you, once love you, your boss might even turn against you. Uh, but how do you handle it? You know, family like you before, but now that you're a Christian, you are working your gift. They are the first people to hate you and reject you. Because, uh, you know, uh, Satan is the god of this world. He rules this world. And uh, because of that, most Christians face persecution and they think that God has forsaken them. God has forgotten about them. No, it's a package. It's a promise that Jesus uh, promised us that you will face trials and face persecution, you know, and betrayers. So welcome to the club and enjoy it with a smile. Let's go into the scriptures. Number one, you know, Jesus told his disciples, he said, remember in John chapter 15, verse 20, he said, remember. The word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. That is John chapter 15, verse 20. Jesus warned the disciples. And over 2,000 years ago that Jesus made this statement, now Christians are still facing persecution and facing trials. In, Mark, in, in that same um, John, in, you know, chapter 15, verse 20, he told us to the disciples that they will face persecution. Now, when we go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, I hope you're following with your Bible. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. I trust that this video is going to encourage you. It's going to be a blessing to you. So go ahead and hit the share button. Invite your friends. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. <laughs> when I first saw this, I said, wow. I thought, uh, you know, it was just written. I didn't know it's going to be a reality many years ago. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. He said, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. And Jesus promised that his follower will face persecution. For... His sake and for the gospel. You also see that in Mark 10, chapter 29, verse 30. The thing is, every Christian should expect to experience persecution, experience betrayal, experience rejection, you know, but not in all the same way. We experience it in different times, different dimensions. So how do you cope as a Christian? How do you cope when you are being persecuted? It's a badge of a Christian. Persecution is a badge of a Christian. So uh, you have to know how to cope with it. But the best place to go is the word of God. 
You see, every Christian should expect to experience persecution, not all in the same way, but for all for the same reason. Because of a compromising devotion to Jesus and to his word. When you are devoted to Jesus and his word, you are going to be opposed. You are going to be persecuted. You are going to be rejected. You are going to be hated. And they will do false accusation against you. You will feel that God has left you. You see, our Lord experienced opposition, hatred. Hatred against him led to his crucifixion. He was crucified because they hated him. Our Lord Jesus Christ himself. Those who follow him must realize that by identifying with Jesus, we are inviting into our lives the very opposition that came against Jesus. You know, in John chapter 15 verse 18, this is what Jesus said. He said, if the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. So, it's a package. When the world hates you, when the world rejects you, when your friends turn against you, the very people that you look onto as your mentor, when you now discover that they are lying because the word of God has revealed the truth, and you confront them, they will turn against you. So it's a package that we all go through. I have had my own fair share. <laughs> you know, look at it. How many of you, even on Facebook, when you tell people to share, like, or comment, your very friends, they will not. <laughs> but when you put something different, put somebody else's link, they are the first to comment or share. So it's a package. You will be rejected. So how do you handle rejection? The best place to go is the word of God. Jesus gave us recommendation. Let us go to James chapter 1 verse 2 to 3. This is going to be a short video. It's going to be very, very inspiring and encouraging. James chapter 1 <laughs> verse 2 to 3. He said, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patient, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So when you are rejected, when your friends even reject you, when you have a vision, when you... um. There are times I minister and I don't know it's true, but people, because of, <laughs> as a package of rejection, they will not share, comment, or like. But when I put something nasty, some others link, they will comment, they will share. I, I, I face that all the time. But there are some that God has brought to my life that are always encouraging me. They comment, they share, they, 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 they repost, whatever. And, and if they disagree, they also let me know so I can learn. So it says here, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Let me read the New Living Translation of the same James chapter 1, verse 2 to 3. Say, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come to your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Whoa! <laughs> How can you be joyful when you have been rejected? How can you be joyful when you have been persecuted? But the Bible says be rejoiceful. So instead of you crying, weeping, being sad, just be rejoicing. Especially when you're a true Christian, a true Bible believer, and you want to go for the word of God, you want to stay with the word of God, you will be rejected. You will be opposed. People will betray you. Because the light of God is shining in your life. Let's go to Philippians chapter 1 verse 29. These are scriptures that to encourage you to know that you are not alone. <laughs> Philippians chapter 1 verse 29. You see, what they tell you is that when you come to Christ, you will face persecution. They don't tell you that. They encourage you, give your life to Jesus, get saved, get saved, get saved. But the minute you get saved, you will face persecution. But that persecution is worth it. Because it's open or uh, it connects you to the creator of the universe and there's an eternal reward for you when you take it the Bible way. In Philippians chapter 1 verse 29, it says, For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. So it's a badge. If you're a Christian and you're not being persecuted, everybody likes you, everybody wants you, everybody wants to talk to you, everyone is looking for you. Hey, there's a problem. <laughs> you are not doing the right thing. A Christian will face persecution. A Christian will face betrayal. A Christian will face rejection. And it's from one stage to the other. But Jesus already told us, the word of God tells us, he said, count it all joy. Instead of crying, instead of weeping, get into your bedroom, close the door, take the battery out of your phone and begin to rejoice when you are being persecuted, when you are being rejected, for, when, when you are being cast away for doing the right thing. Oh, glory to God. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12, these are just scriptures to encourage you. I don't know who you are. Whatever persecution you are facing right now, whatever rejection you are facing right now, it's an opportunity for you to be full of joy. Just be happy. <laughs> just be happy. All by yourself in your room. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12, I'll read from verse 12 to 14. It says, Beloved, who is the beloved? You, the believer, you are the beloved. And God is talking to you. It says, Beloved, do not think it strange. Concern the fire trial, which is to try you. As though some strange things happen to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering. 
that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. Wow! If you are a reproach for the name of Christ, blessed are you for the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. Oh, glory to God. Do you know what this passage is saying? <laughs> wow. It's telling you that when you, when you face rejection because you love Jesus, when you face rejection and be persecuted because you love the word of God and you stand for the truth, ah, it's a kind of joy. It said, don't think it's strange. The fire trial which is to try you. I'm reading first, you know, it's first Peter chapter 4 verse 12 to 14. It is to try you. Even God himself will send his people to try you. He will send his people to reject you so that you will have greater fellowship with him, so that you will know him better, so that you will know him personally. Those that you depend on, those that you are looking at as mentor, those that you are, are serving. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. God himself will allow them <laughs> to reject you so that you can put your trust alone in God. He said, beloved, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Beloved, do not think it's strange concerning a fire trial which is to try you. You think you have done your best. You think you are doing the truth. You think you are serving, you know, Jesus. You are, you want the truth and everybody will like you. No, no, a thousand times no, a thousand times no, a thousand times no. It's a fiery trial that is sent to test you. Verse 13, 1 Peter chapter 4, it says, But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering. So, how many of you who are going through rejection or persecution, how many of you are rejo rejoicing? Especially when you do it for Jesus. You no, know, a lot of people are sad. They are like, why me? Why me? Why me? No. What you need to do is get in your bedroom, close the door, <laughs> and begin to rejoice. Why? It said, verse 14, oh my goodness. It said, verse 13 says, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering. And I like what verse 14 says. It says, you are reproached for the name of Christ. Blessed are you for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. When you are being rejected, when you are being persecuted, cast out, oh, falsely accused because of Jesus and his word, the Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 14, it says the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. Hallelujah. How many of you want the spirit of glory and of God to rest upon you? It comes with a package of rejection, of persecution, of being uh, misunderstood. Oh, glory to God. Wherever you are, just lift up your hands towards heaven. Say, Father, I thank you. I thank you for the spirit of glory and of God that rests upon me. Thank you, Lord, for all I've been through, all the fire trial I've been through. Oh, glory to God. I am rejoicing. That is how you respond to the word of God. You know, Jesus was rejected in Capernaum. His own family rejected him. His own uh, countrymen, they rejected him. That's by all the miracles that he did. That's by the truth that he preached. He was rejected. Look at what the Bible says, First Peter chapter 2, verse 4. It says, First Peter chapter 2, verse 4. It says, as you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to God. It is better for God to, uh, uh, to receive you than for humans. Humans will reject you. They will love you one day, the next day. They, 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 you know, I have people who like me one time, they unfollow me. And also, I have people that I like one time and I unfollow. You know, we are human beings. But when you have been persecuted for Jesus and the spirit of glory rests upon you and God receives you, oh my goodness, it's the best thing. But it comes with rejection. Even Jesus himself was rejected. That's why the miracles and the truth that he brought. That's why the fact that he died for people on the cross. He died for the whole world. He was still rejected. Even right now, there are countries who don't want to hear about Jesus. They don't want anything to do with the Bible. He's been rejected, but yet he's the creator of the universe. So rejoice. Glory to God. I love what Sam said in Psalm 27 verse 10. Psalm 27 verse 10. He said, don't my father and my mother forsake me. The Lord will receive me. Glory to God. When you love God, when you love his word, even your father, your mother, your wife, your husband will reject you. Your children will even reject you. But count it all joy. He said the Lord will receive him. And it is better for God to receive you than for human beings to receive you. Glory to God. In, in Matthew chapter 5 verse 10, this is the words of Jesus. Matthew chapter 5 verse 10. He said, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You want to go to heaven? <laughs> you think everybody will like you on this earth? They will, everything you say, they will agree with you. If we are preaching the truth, they will love you. They will embrace you. No, you will be rejected. You will be persecuted. And what you do, can it all joy? The Bible said that 
yours is the kingdom of heaven. Glory to God. And not only that, in the 11th verse of March chapter 5, Jesus said, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you <laughs> and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Wow, wow, wow. Again, this message for those who love Jesus, who love the word and want to stand for the truth. You will be reviled by men. Oh, they will try to deceive you, use, use a guilty ploy to make you to do what they want you to do. And if you don't do it, you'll be reviled. They will blackmail you. They will do all sorts of things against you. You will think that, why are you going through this? You are doing the truth. You are doing the right thing. Why are they persecuting you? Well, it, it's an honor. It's a badge that every one of the genuine Christian, when I say genuine Christian, not church goers, Genuine Christian who are saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, who love Jesus, who love his word. Remember what Jesus said. He said, if you love me and my words abide in you, you will do. You will ask what you will and you will be done. Look at it. When you love Jesus, his words has to abide in you. In other words, you be a living Bible. You do what the word of God says. You do the truth. And not everybody will like you. What are examples of rejection? <laughs> oh, okay, I have a few lists here. You know, in my country... <laughs> When you go and talk to somebody and uh, they will be nodding their head and especially, especially women if they don't like they, they can pretend a lot and the minute you turn your back they'll be doing their nose like this <laughs> that means they are rejecting you <laughs> they are mocking you so have you faced those type of rejection i know most of you in america you don't know what that means when you see somebody doing their nose like this <laughs> but when you go to africa <laughs> that means they are rejecting you <laughs> You know, back to what we are doing. <laughs> Joseph was rejected by his family, even though he brought glory to God. Joseph was betrayed. You know the story of Joseph in the book of Genesis. Uh, Genesis. He was betrayed. His own brother sold him. He was rejected. You see that in Genesis chapter 37, verse 12 to 36. Because of time, we won't have time to read it. Some of you know the story. But Joseph, after God has raised him to become a minister, prime minister, Jesus has told them, he said, what you meant for evil, God has turned around for his good. I see God turning things around. What they meant evil for you, to mock you, to reject you, to cast you down, to make you feel sad because you believe in Jesus, because you believe in his word. I see God turning around for your good in the name of Jesus. Wow. Jesus was rejected several times. Oh, glory to God. There's a particular story here that I want to share with you that uh, is of interest. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 28. In Matthew chapter 8, I'm going to read verse... Uh, 28 into 34. I'm going to do this quickly. So join it with me. In Matthew chapter 8, I'm going to start now. When he came to the other side of, into the country of Gadarenes, two men who were demon-possessed met him as they were coming out of the tombs. They were so extremely violent that no one could pass by that way. Verse 29, And they cried out, saying, What business do we have with each other, son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? Verse 30, Matthew chapter 8, it said, Now there was a herd of swine feeding at a distance from them. The demons began to entreat him, saying, If you are going to cast us out, send us into the herd of swine. Verse 32, Matthew chapter 8, And he said unto them, Go! And they came out and went into the swine. And the whole herd rushed into the steep bank, into the sea, and Perish in the waters. Verse 33. The herdsmen ran away and went to the city and reported everything, including what had happened to the demoniacs. demoniac. And verse 34. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus. And when they saw him, they implored him to leave their region. They rejected. Jesus did. He cast out a demon that was oppressing that city. Jesus cast it. Bind it. Sister Mebe, God bless you. Thank you for joining. Sister Motoni, God bless you. Princess Adela, Rosemary, God bless you. God's time, God bless you. Thank you for watching. Go ahead and hit the share button. I trust that this message is going to be a blessing to you. Glory to God. Wow. Jesus did what was right, but they told Jesus to leave. Leave our country. They rejected him. Wow. Have you been rejected for doing the right thing? Have you been rejected? It's all good. What about Apostle Peter? Apostle Paul was rejected, Acts chapter 16. He was rejected when he cast out demon from a slave girl. They locked him up and they rejected him. When you look at <laughs> Galatians chapter 6 verse 17, this is what Apostle Paul said. He said, from henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of Jesus Christ. What are the marks that you have in your body? Do you have marks of rejection? Do you have marks of persecution? Have you been through fire? Have you been through condemnation? Count it all joy. It's a package that the Spirit of God and glory rests upon you. Oh, look at Stephen. 
Stephen in the Bible, Stephen preached about Jesus. He told them about Jesus. What did they do? They stoned Stephen to death. But what did Stephen say? He says, Lord, don't count their sins against them. So what do you do when they persecute you? Don't be bitter. You know, the other type of persecution that we face mostly is your friends and family. They will reject you for being a genuine Christian and preaching the truth. They, oh, they, if you think they will support you, forget it. They ain't going to support you. Your friends that you count on, they won't support you. It's only a few that God has revealed you to that will support you. So what do you do? They reject you, just move on. Even your church. I remember many years ago when I first started, I was so rejected because I told the truth. I tell the, told them the truth. Oh, they say, eh, the church, because, hey, I didn't know that it was a demonic church that I was going to. That's many, many before I even got saved. So I had to leave the church and look for God and I got saved. So your church will even, <laughs> the past, <laughs> they will reject you because you stand for the truth. Because you don't know the spirit that's operating in that church. That's why I have to pray before you go to any church. Now, why do, do you get rejected? Why is the rejection? Why rejection? Number one, Satan is the God that rules this world. I'm going to read 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 3 to 4. It says, if there's anything hidden about our message, it is hidden only to someone who is lost. The God who rules this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers. They cannot see the light, which is in the good news about our glorious Christ. It's because Satan ruled the world. So it stands full of darkness. You, once you are saved, the light shines in and through you. And once that light begins to shine, people don't like truth. They don't like the light. Number two, number your light shine and expose them. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says, But ye are a chosen generation, royal priesthood, and holy nation, a, part, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praise of him who had called you out of out of darkness into his marvelous light. Look at the last treatment. God called you out of darkness, and now you're in the marvelous light of God. So when you show up, the marvelous light of God shows up. So people will reject you because that light is shining on them. It's going to reveal their secret, their, their bad deeds. So can it all joy when they reject you? Can it all joy when you go to persecution? Now, also, because... Most people have not submitted to the word of God. They go to church, but they have not submitted to the word of God. So you that you decide to go for the word of God and allow the word of God to express in and through you, they will reject you. Wow. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 5, say, let me read 1 John chapter 4, verse 5. It says, they are of the world, therefore speak of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. So when you are saved, you'll be talking on behalf of God. And those who are not saved, they don't want to hear you. They will reject you. They will persecute you. They will do all manner of things against you because they don't like you. But those who are of God will always listen to you. They always, <laughs> that is why I see most people who share the truth. They, they <laughs> anyway, let's not go there. Number three, they have submitted to God out of this world. You have to submit to God. You have to submit to God. If they don't submit to God, they cannot hear you. I refer to John chapter 4, verse 5. He said, They are of this world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth us. I've read that before. The Baramili, the New Living Translation. He said, Those people belong to this world. So they speak from the world's point, view, viewpoint, and the world listen to them. But we belong to God, and those who know God listen to us. Wow. If they do not belong to God, they do not listen to us. That is how we know. If someone has the spirit of truth or the spirit of deception, you see, that's how you know when you stand for the truth and they reject you, you automatically know who has the spirit of truth and of deception. See, there are two types of people living in this world. There are those who believe in God and those who don't believe in God. And those who believe in God has to believe in the truth, the word. And once you believe and you're expressing the truth, those who are in darkness or those who even go to church who don't believe in the word will not like you. They will reject you. They will betray you. They will persecute you. So, how do you handle rejection? Number one, quickly, I'm going to go through this. Number one, understand it's not a fault. There is a hidden treasure in you that is shining. Number two, forgive those who persecute you. Forgive those who reject you. Don't be bitter against them. Forgive them because forgiveness is the principle of the kingdom of God. Number three, get closer to God and get to know God intimately through the word. Get a personal relationship. Number four, stay with those who genuinely love God. You will meet people who genuinely love God. You will meet people who are religious people who go to church but they don't generally love God of course you meet unbelievers but if you're going through persecution and rejection stay with people who truly know God and who know God through the word stay with those who truly love God know that God will turn it around for your good it will all work out for your good because it's all things work together for good to them that love God and are called to his purpose abide in the word of God abide in the word of his grace and it's going to build it up pray in the spirit to be built up by praying the Holy Ghost you know and finally, pray for your enemies. 
Because those people are enemies of God. They don't know God. We have to pray for them instead of uh, pray for them to die by fire. And finally, surround yourself with genuine Christian. Go to a genuine place where you can fellowship with the word of God, with the true word of God. Glory to God. And possibly get a mentor who knows the word of God, who you can follow, who you can, who can teach you the word, who can encourage you. It's your responsibility. Nobody will do it for you. Let me read Psalm 34 verse 17. It said, the righteous cry out to the Lord and hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and save those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord deliver him from them all. I like that part of the scriptures. He protects all his bones. Not one of them will be broken. Understand that when you truly love God and love his word, he will protect you. And none of your bones will be broken. And everything will work out for your good. <laughs> it doesn't matter. So how does this apply to you? Number one, if you are facing rejection and persecution and persecution right now for betrayal because you stand for Jesus and his word, cheer up, rejoice. Rejoice and be exceeding glad because that's what they told us to do. You know, so, you know, just be rejoicing. And also, Apostle Peter specifically forbid Christians from thinking that all suffering is necessary. Some suffering are not necessary. You know, Christians should not suffer all the time. Let me read 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 15. It says, Let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a meddler. You see, when Christians suffer for doing what God forbid, they are not experiencing Christian persecution and must not twist the scripture in an attempt to comfort themselves with the promises that are designed for those who suffer because of their faith in Christ. See, there are two types of suffering. If you suffer for your wrongdoing, for your evil, for wickedness, for all these things, that is not Christian persecution. But when you stand for the truth, when you stand for the truth, you will go through challenges and tribulation. Just as Psalm 34, verse 19 to 20, 20 that I read, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord deliver him from out of them, or he keep his bones, and none of one of them is broken. So, for the righteous are those who are saved, who stand for the truth. In Proverbs chapter 25, verse 16, it says, For a just man falleth seven times, and rises up again, but the wicked falleth into mischief. See, whether you like it or not, you will face persecution when you stand for the truth. When you stand for God, Glory to God. And finally, as I begin to round up, in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10, it says, But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered for a while, <laughs> perfect, established, strengthened, and set to you. So it's an order. It's a package. You will face rejection. You will face persecution. You will face betrayal, even by your own close friend. By your loved one, they will betray you. They will walk out of your life. And you will be thinking, what happened? It's a package. But the Bible tells us that after you have suffered for a while, God will, establish, will perfect you, he will establish you and strengthen you and set to you. So there's an order and I see God perfecting you. I see God settling you in the name of Jesus. As long as you stand for the truth. You know, just as I read in Psalm 34 verse 19, it says many are the afflictions of the righteous. It didn't say many are the afflictions of the sinners, the unbelievers. It said of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him out of them. So God himself come to their aid. You only come to the aid of those who are saved, those who are born again. And you are watching me today, you are not saved. We are not born again. You are not saved. God will not come. He has no obligation to rescue you. You are watching me say, Brother Ambrose, how do I get saved? All you need to do is put your faith in what Jesus did by hearing the gospel. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 4, that Jesus died for all your sins by shedding his blood on the cross for your past, present, and future sins. Now, if you put your faith alone on what he did, he died, he was buried, he raised himself from the dead. When you put your faith alone, not your works, not your experience, when you put your faith alone on what Jesus did, not because you go to church, not because you pay tithe, not because you got water baptized, but when you put your faith alone on what Jesus did, that he died on that cross, he was buried, he raised himself from the dead, he shed his blood for you. When you put your faith alone on him and you call on God, you say, Lord, I, I, I need to repent, I'm repenting, I, I'm going the wrong way, I need to go the right way, I'm looking for a savior. Now, when you turn around and put your faith on God, on Jesus, sorry, on Jesus, what he did on the cross, and say to God that, Lord, I repent, I confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life, and I believe that God has raised him from the dead, and you made from the bottom of your heart. According to Romans chapter 10, verse 9, the Bible says you get saved. It's as simple as that. God has made it so simple. So go ahead and go to Jesus today. Come to Jesus today. Come, 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 come. Don't mind. No matter the rejection, no matter the persecution, it's a package. We enjoy it, and we come out victoriously all the time oh glory to god you see there's a benefit when you get saved it's a many are there it's a many uh, <laughs> Psalm 34 verse 90 it's a many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord 
not the devil, but the Lord, not your pastor, but the Lord, not your bishop, but the Lord deliver him. Isn't it that such a privilege for God himself to come and deliver you from your oppression? It's only when you get saved. And look at Proverbs chapter 2, verse 16, as I begin to round up. It says, for a just man falleth seven times and rises up again, but the wicked shall fall into the mischief. The just man is those who are saved. So if you're not saved today, come to Jesus. Jesus is waiting for you. Get saved today. Get filled with the Holy Spirit. And I love, like what Ephesians chapter 1 verse 30 says, once you are saved, it said, in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of our salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. It doesn't matter the persecution. It doesn't matter the trial. It doesn't matter the pain that you go through. They are not worthy to be compared to the seal of the Holy Spirit upon your life. So come to Jesus today. Get saved today. Get saved by believing that what Jesus did on the cross is enough. And you put your faith alone on the bloody mess that Jesus went through when he shed his blood. That put your faith that he went to that bloody mess for you, for your justification. Glory to God. Next thing is to grow in the Lord. Develop yourself and have a personal relationship through the word of God and the Holy Spirit. You see, you will also, you will always face betrayal, you will face the rejection, you will face trouble, you will face challenges once you stand for God, for the truth, and for the Word of God. So it's my prayer that the Lord will strengthen you in the name of Jesus as we pray for those who are going through rejection right now, those who are going through persecution, I pray that you'll be strengthened in your inner man by the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus, that God will give you the strength to look unto him, look unto him for comfort, look unto him for providence, look unto him for, for your needs in the mighty name of Jesus, that God will strengthen you in your work with God in the name of Jesus. Whenever you are facing persecution, understand that God knows what you're going through. And it's all going to work out for your good. And finally, don't be bitter against your enemy. No, no, a thousand times don't. Don't. It's better to hand them over to God and let God deal with them. Oh, it's, it's much better. So don't be bitter against your, against your enemies. Those who have betrayed you, those who have lied against you, have cheated you, have persecuted you wrong, falsely. No, just pray for them that the spirit of God and glory will rest upon them. That they will be saved. That they will come to know God. And they will come to... Know God by his word in the name of Jesus. See, God loves you so much. That's why he allows you to go through that persecution and rejection. Because the spirit of God and the spirit of glory of God rests upon you. Glory to God. So I want to thank you for joining me on this fellowship. And, um, you know, again, Ambrose King Online Ministry we also do Kingdom Love Mission where we reach out to the poor. We reach out to those disenfranchised. We minister to them by giving them food, giving them clothing. And if you want to support us in any way, in any way that you are led, please feel free to visit us on www.ambrosking.org. You know, during this pandemic, you know, uh, the homeless, the sh those out uh, on the streets, they still need support. So we go out there to minister to them. So if you want to support us, please feel free to go to www.ambrosking.org. I'll put the link on the uh, comment section below and prayerfully, whatever you feel as you are led, you are not being forced from zero to 100%, whatever you want to do. And I trust that as we do this together, we are participating together and we are bringing smile to people's faces. Glory to God. So go ahead and share, comment, and like the video. And whether you agree with me or not, just put your comments and that helps us to fellowship together. We can disagree to agree, but understand that as a Christian, God has called.